Good afternoon everybody, how are we? Wow, how's your day going? Is it going good? It's been very exciting here. Very, very exciting here. Um, wow, what have we had? We've had two major judging sessions and, and a fire. Not in our building, don't, don't worry, not, not here. Uh, down the road, I was talking to Maria um, on the phone while choosing, in FaceTime, while choosing um, her favourite bag to award a prize to and the smoke just started wafting down the street. Not sure, not sure whose factory it was yet. I need to go and have a look soon though because I'm stressing it's the Oki Surfboard Shop. I don't know why but I love the Oki Surfboard Boys. They are um, in their 60s and still go hit the waves every summer holidays like they're 18 and I love them so I need to go and check. You go and check soon but um, it's all exciting and yes it's all fine now but wow big stuff while trying to uh, concentrate with Maria choosing her favourite bag for um, our challenge and that's all tomorrow morning. You find out tomorrow morning, not today. <laughs> so um, what else? Uh, Eileen Campbell as well has done her judging so I've had a good chat with both of them this afternoon and it was really lovely just talking to them uh, and planning, starting to plan ahead for um, yeah when we can get together and I can head over to their place and interview them in their studios for you with their quilts. Uh, Marie has told me the up, the upload speed at her place is actually better than ours where we film our Facebook live shows. So I'll be heading over there as quick as possible to have a chat with her. So it's all, um, it's all very exciting. It's, it's all happening and I'm very, very excited for those that have just won themselves a Burnett sewing machine embroidery unit or an automatic threading overlocker or a thousand dollar gift voucher. It's going to be a rough night waiting, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, well that's the power I hold, I'm sorry, that's just it. Now, first of all, it's a little bit chilly here. Oh, who's here? Who is here? Marie's here. Jan's here. Hello Pam. Hello Nancy. Good afternoon. Hi Floria. Good to see you here. Yes, another stunning quilt, Barbara, and this is our 10th, can you believe it? Our 10th little Facebook Live this week. Uh, and last year was going to be our 10th anniversary exhibition, so this is like a mini celebration. This one, just a little mini one. Another stunning quilt. Hey Josie, good afternoon Yvonne, good to see you. Hello Melanie, uh, Jillian's here, Marie's here, good afternoon. Yeah, you're all fantastic there Nancy, that's great. Hi Cecily, good afternoon. Hey Meg, where have you been? They're all happening here for you, get on board, get on board. So as soon as I can get out as well, we are going hop in the car and go to Meg's because I promised to go to Meg's about oh, 12 months ago. So I'm heading up to your place. Look out. I'm on the way. It's going to happen. Good afternoon, Christine. Good to see you. Sue. Jenny. Hi. Hi, Denise. Hello, Kathy. Uh, I know I, like, I do. This one's full on, isn't it? It is full on. And I've left this one to last of Rachel's uh, with another little, you know, it's all about me reason, I'll tell you. Um, I am keeping warm, Sharon. Do you like my denim jacket? Someone said to me this morning, surely, surely you are not a denim jacket girl. And I said, well, mate, you just don't know me well enough yet, because <laughs> I actually am. Uh, Jenny Miller, I'm from your side of town, correct? Hi, Flynn. How are you this afternoon, my handsome man? Are you good? You can take the girl um, out of Croydon High, but you can't take Croydon High out of the girl. I owned numerous denim jackets. So how are things in California? Well, I kind of know because I chat with my fabric agent all the time, but I hope you're doing really well. Love a bit of California. Oh, Sue, Manhattan Beach Shopping Mall. <gasps> oh. have, you, has, have any of you ever been in an actual Valentine or Hallmark store. They have their own their own stores in America and we don't call them shops, they're stores. Is that correct, Sue? I think you'd agree with me. Uh, I nearly got kicked out with Biffy Dewhurst out of the Hallmark store in the Manhattan Beach Shopping Centre. There's a mall just down from the hotel that I stay in 
because we were being a bit silly and hysterical over how drop dead gorgeous all the greeting cards were and we knew we were very very limited after going to Houston trade show with how much stock we could bring home and we were standing in the store doing this with our hands giggling trying to work out how much paperwork we could still take home with us um, but there's a place down on Manhattan Beach that has the most insane delicious crab cakes and every now and then I get a little bit of a craving for a little bit of that and there's the what is it the kahuna bar at the shopping center with oh never mind oh I've stopped now it's because I haven't had lunch I'm just talking food good afternoon Louise Jackie Jeanette Cindy oh, my team's in the building um, you're working on your sample blocks, Rosemary. That is very good to hear. I'm very, very pleased to hear that. All right, shall we get started and go through? I've got three lovely quilts to show you that after this afternoon. But first, yes, the denim jacket. Do you like the denim jacket? Remember how I said to you this morning I had one of Judy Vermeulen's jackets here to show you? Can you sit and turn around? And I've got to back up. This is the weirdest thing to try and do. Have a look at the back of my jacket. <gasps> is that just not the cutest thing? Isn't it just gorgeous? How would you be walking down the street with this and no one can see that there's anything on the back? Oh, I feel like that girl I watch on Instagram that sells her clothes now, does the walk. And then I do the turn and look at the back. <laughs> it's just, just lovely. <gasps> Sue, no, you can't shut the Hallmark stores. Ah... Uh, Anyway, there she is on the back of my jacket. So I'm just going to give that little bit of a twirl every now and then when you're talking to someone. Um, yes, but Judy, I didn't think it was, would fit. It was going to go on a mannequin. But thanks to you, I think it's, I think it's a bit of stretch denim. So I managed to get it on. Anyway, uh, I'm going to take it. I will take it off because I'm going to get a bit hot now because the sun's shining through. So while I do that, have a look at this stunning quilt I've got up here. The last one in our series we're showing you from the gorgeous Rachel Daisy. And this one is called I Love a Sunburnt Country. And I think it is the best name for a quilt. And uh, yeah, I may have left it till last because also next year will be the name of a fabric range as well. So, I mean, it's going to be a really popular name to use, I know, but I'm using it next year. Uh, not like under the Australian sun. I want to give you an art fabric range that gives you your dry creek beds and your foliage and everything in small prints to use. So that's why I'm really attached to this quilt beyond the fact it is an amazing quilt. I've taken my photos already to put up for you after the live and I have done some close-ups on some of the detail and I really encourage you to have a look because again Rachel has rescued some beautiful you know long stitch that has been done by someone lovingly in a lot of time and then it has been discarded so now it has an absolutely premium spot with a new lease of life on one of Rachel's quilts um, there's there's heaps and heaps going on in this quilt and I think that's what I love about these they're like grown-up I spy quilts so you can spend ages having a look at all the detail and I would imagine that's half the fun, absolutely half the fun of doing one of these is that you can um, add things in, little elements that are just going to take people by surprise. And I know that's one little thing I love when I'm making a quilt or I encourage students to do is add a little bit of quirkiness, whether it be in your stitchery, in your quilting, um, the odd little paper piece that here and there with a fussy cut motif on it. It just all adds to the joy that people get from your work. So, uh, this one, Rachel saw. I better read the official bit from Miss Rachel. I Love a Sunburn Country was the first that Rachel made of her tea towel quilts. And she made it for her Whiz Bang Adventures with Folded Fabric book. So if you get Rachel's book, which I strongly encourage you to do because it's going to give you so many hours of fun and a completely different perspective on doing 3D work. Really, really different to what I do and um, a great book and a great read just, just to have and just have joy of having a look through it. Um, it's published by Quilt Mania. So if you do need a little bit of advice on where you can get Rachel's book, 
then you can go to them if you're overseas. But otherwise, remember uh, later earlier in the week, has put in the bio for us where you can get all of Rachel's uh, bits and bobs. If you bits and bobs, holy moly, I've been listening to Natasha too much. Rachel's patterns and books is what I should say. Um, then just Google Rachel Daisy, Google Whizbang, and you will find them very easily. Um, and because because Quilt Mania are based in France, and um, the book. Yeah, so the book is being distributed internationally. So Rachel wanted to make sure that there was a quintessential Aussie quilt to send some Australian sunshine throughout the world. Yep, that'll do it. Absolutely. The colours of the quilt were inspired by the Australian outback, burnt oranges, rich browns, golden sun yellow, dark green, sunset pink blush, in a, match, in a mix of fabrics including... Denim, upholstery fabric, bark cloth, corduroy, pillowcases, recycled tapestries, and even some pieces of woolen blanket. We get that. Do you want to look at the blanket? Instead of the whiz bang folds here, Rachel's actually used one of those old blankets. I remember these. We had these in the caravan. We had the brightly coloured tartan blankets. <laughs> With the flannelette sheets for when it was freezing cold. Probably in Dubbo, freezing cold on the way to Queensland. Uluru is placed in the centre of the quilt, just as it's in the centre of Australia, and there's a hanky from Tasmania down below. <laughs> now, birds have flown in and landed all over the quilt and beautiful Aussie flowers, but the icon that makes everyone smile, of course, is the big jar of Vegemite. The more you look, the more you see. There are buttons, yo yo, circles of fabric, hearts, whiz bang circles. The prairie point circles are a fun and different way to frame favourite fabrics and placed in a way that looks as though they are floating across the quilt. This style of eclectic applique also allows room for new treasures to be added as you find them. Oh, so we can keep building on top of the quilt once it's finished. That's, that's a very interesting perspective to think about. It reminds me of those of us that have had the joy, if you want to call it that, of having scouts in our lives or girl guides where they've got their camp blankets and you're adding all the badges around the outside and then into the middle. It's that for grown-ups. Absolutely that for grown-ups. So, um, gee, I wonder if I can steal Steve's scout blanket back. No, no, I won't do that. But that's, that's what it is. And maybe, maybe that's just a gorgeous thing to do for kids or for teenagers. Give them the basics of the quilt. And when they're not looking every now and then, go and applique on a little extra for them to find. What a great idea. Flynn, get your grandmother onto that now. Absolutely, that's got to happen. I do like that idea of just constantly adding new little details on. Prairie Point edging has a vintage feel that suits these quilts for a quirky twist in the quilt. They are added to just two sides. Mm -hmm. Overall, there is a playful feel to the quilt, that dry Aussie sense of humour. It's a popular quilt and it's travelled now to shows in the US, France and New Zealand, but most notable award for winning two-place prize at the 2019 Pro, Out, Pro Heart Outback Art Award, an esteemed art prize held annually in Broken Hill. Ah, oh, she says it's always a great moment when a quilt is recognised by the art world. Oh, that is so true. The name comes from the well-known poem by Dorothea. Of course, my country, I love a sunburnt country. Oh, lovely, lovely, lovely. So I think we've seen a lot of Rachel's work this week. And did you see the quirky? You see the quirky edge over here? It's just, I think, I think um, everything in life is about a balance, isn't it? So a little bit like I try and encourage you, if you're working on a huge quilt, just to stop every now and then and make something little and balance it out and get that whole sense of achievement of finishing something. It's a balance. So we've got our huge quilts that we're piecing or we're English paper piecing or, you know, we're doing all of that. But then every now and then take a little break, go and make yourself a little handbag, a little purse, a table runner, just so you've got that completion feel to it. And I think, um, I think having Rachel's 
work in the building has kind of added that for me because I've got all my serious new quilts going on with my fabrics I'm designing and handbags and it's all about the business but for me if I'm going to stop and smell the roses or the daisies or whichever way you want to look at it this is the sort of quilt that I would make at the moment for me just to stop reflect on some things that have happened use some things that are sitting neglected in the cupboard and do something just for myself so um, I love it I think I've told you I told Rachel I've got maybe not I've got a big yellow and blue tapestry cushion cover that I did quite a few years ago that's now come off the cushion just sitting in the cupboard with a rooster on it and I think that might be um, the start of my farm quilt with my grandmother's doilies and things through it there might be a bit of hand dyeing happening some ribbon threading through but I think it's I think they're almost like a therapy quilt to sit down and do good fun absolutely good fun uh, have I missed anything Meg I have an epic camp blanket left it at a dodgy motel in Nagambi. They claimed it wasn't there when I realised. Oh no! <gasps> I hate that when they do that. It must have been epic. What were you doing in Nagambi? Never mind. Oh, well, <laughs> we'll talk about that later. We'll talk about that later. All right. So, love it, love it, love it. So now, the last two quilts I'm going to show you are actually the smallest ones in the building and I've got two and they are um, the last of our Eileen Campbell's sadly and another lovely gorgeous one um, who I tried to get hold of the artist just a little while ago she wasn't answering the phone so I'm going to have to ring her later and say hey Chris you were on Facebook all right let's swap over there you go so this is Eileen Campbell's beautiful little quilt called Spring Fantasy. Uh, it was made for the International Quilt Festival in um, 2012 to celebrate spring. And it was one of 32 quilts that were actually chosen for the exhibition. It was designed, its design is from the world of fantasy. So we've got birds and blossoms and butterflies they're always their first, her first thoughts of spring. Um, a pink to pale ombre fabric was used for three dimensional flowers highlighted with flat backed rhinestones. Just lovely. So have a little bit close look at those birds. Um, they've got dimentis for their eyes. And I'm just going to bring the camera in a little bit for you. Just which way? That way. There you go. Let's just zoom right in there. There we are. And I can bring the light over. I'm just going to try and get a little bit brighter for you. There we go. So the one thing I want you to take notice of first, see that binding on the quilt? See, it's another ombre and it is a beautiful one and I, this, it's from, I don't think Eileen will mind me saying this, it's from a fair while ago and it's one of those rare fabrics that once I had the shop, I really didn't worry about having too much of a stash of my own anymore because the shop was my stash, if that makes sense. But this, this was one that lived in my stash for a long time and they were beautiful. They came straight out of Japan but um, it's just, can you see it in here? See that? So Eileen's used it for the border, but she's also used it here. And she's just broken up the background with these, with these little, uh, little inner sashings in between. Okay, so now you're up close, you can see we've got more of these beautiful little blossoms like we had on some of the quilts yesterday. And those little birds all have their beautiful little rhinestone little eyes that have been popped on and I don't know if you've realized yet but all of these birds have actually come from the same fabric from that ombre fabric so they are all made uh, with the same one so you know we're looking at it thinking she's used lots of different fabrics but it's one fabric for all of the birds you know I love an ombre oh hi Deb it's good to see you 
Uh, who else is here? Oh, Christine's here as well. Hello. Hi, Bernadette. Good afternoon. Right, now, have a look at the trunks. Have a look at the trunk. Well, sorry, the trunk and the branches. That is a really gorgeous fabric here. And I forgot to ask Eileen when I was speaking to her about this one. I almost felt like that she had used the back of a fabric. Just the look of it. I'm probably wrong, but it did look like she's used to the reverse. And just, just added in this little metallic coordinate print. This, this little teeny weeny print here, this is kind of reflective of what I'm going to do next year in that sunburnt country range. Just lots of little ones with a lot of ombre in them too. So, um, yeah, yeah, can't wait. Okay, so little bits here. And it's sort of, when you stand back, it actually gives, that's what gives the stems and the branches dimension. But also when you're standing back looking at it, particularly at some times, it looks like the branches are wet. It just, because it looks like the sun is shining off or reflecting off just these little bits, like the birds are sitting there just after the rain. And then when you come into the leaves, uh, there, there are so many different fabrics in here. You think, when you get up close, no, there is only about three, I think. There's a bit of Under the Australian Sun Blossom, some Robert Kaufman Fusions, probably two, two different colours of Robert Kaufman Fusions in here, leaf and a darker olive one. But again, because they are so small, every, every little leaf looks different depending on where it has been cut from that particular print. So small print, but small leaves, you're still going to get that variation. And I think, I think you're in close enough to see the quilting. Let me just take you in again so you can see it. I'll get you up close. Then I'm going to risk, risk it for a biscuit. See if I can get you. There you are. Okay, have a look at that beautiful quilting. A really... Um, very signature, I'm going to use the term signature quilting design by Eileen, where we have all of these little leaves, we've got all these beautiful little leaves, and they reflect the leaves that are here. So she will do a leaf, and then they'll just have a little loop inside the leaf again. All right, and then, every now and then, I don't know if you can see that, there's a butterfly. And it is the palest of pink, and I don't know how she did it. I'm thinking maybe there's another piece of fabric underneath, or I don't know what she's done. I don't know. She might text me and tell me. I don't know. Yes, the quilting is all done on a domestic machine pack. It is absolutely, so depending on um, 2012, I'm thinking, I'm thinking of Benina. I'm thinking it's a Benina 710. I reckon, I, I would think that Eileen had her machine 10 years ago. So I could be wrong, but I don't think I'm far off. Uh, yeah, it's just amazing, isn't it? All of her work is done on a domestic machine, all of it. Good afternoon, Tara. Hello. Happy with that? Are we all feeling completely inadequate now? Or are we all feeling inspired? I tell you what, it's a fine line, isn't it? It's a really fine line to know where we're going. Okay, that's it. I'm packing it in. I'm going to just go and knit. Or do we really feel inspired to have a go? I feel inspired. Definitely feel inspired. So, there we go. Uh, okay, who else is here this afternoon? Good afternoon. You feel inspired, Christine? Good. Good, because you've got the same machine, so get cracking. Um, <laughs> Fiona is so funny. Oh, dear. Okay, Fiona says, yep, inadequacy is my friend. Okay, we'll have none of that. Now, I'm just seeing who's here. Um, good afternoon, Del, and welcome to our live shows. Good to see you. Um, yeah, the quilted butterflies are gorgeous, aren't they? Just gorgeous. Okay, so... Now what I've got is a really special little quilt and it's, I'm just going to set this up. Um, the next quilt that I'm going to show you is by Christine Dow and she lives in Darling, Hearts in Darling Heights in Queensland. Now this quilt uh, was here, it came down 
for the last exhibition, or well, the second last exhibition, I can't remember now. Yeah, it was. It was the May one, and it came down to pop in. But because of the theme that we, it came down with uh, Dorothy Cleese quilts, who and she's Dorothy's mate. But do you remember the horses? No one forgets the horses. When it came down, there you go. Um, it it just didn't work with all of the colours that we had here for the uh, for the exhibition for the autumn one. And I know in reflection now, when you're having a look at it, you're going, "Yeah, Lisa, it's got it's got the olders in it, so it should." But the because of the purple, it didn't work. So um, well, there's somebody saying, "I need to retire to spend time sewing to get half as good as I think." Yeah. Yep, we all need a little bit of that, a little bit of that extra time. There we go. I'm just trying to get some more light on it because it is an illuminous piece and I want you to be able to see the beading. There we are. Okay, so um, it was just a stunning piece and again, I've taken some, I've taken some shots for you so I can put them up so that you get a really, really good perspective on um, the beautiful thread work and the beading. There's so much going on with this quilt. So you can see the olgas uh, down the bottom and then it all goes up sort of in these beautiful wisps up into Indigenous Dreamtime characters. It, it, it's, it speaks volumes. Uh, um, if you have a look down at the bottom, have a look at that thread work. Have a look at that. Good afternoon, Judith. How are we today? Oh, Christine, my son is watching with me and loves this one. Yeah, and I'm not surprised because it's interesting, isn't it? Some things appeal to some people, things appeal to different people. Uh, we do, we do find. I'm going to be honest here. We do find that um, the men in our lives do have uh, different preferences at work. One of the things that has always worked really well for me um, is doing Australian flowers because the fellas, and I'm not being sexist or anything here, the fellas tend to really be comfortable with sleeping under Australian flowers. I'm just going to zoom this in for you. There we go. Just a bit. I want you to be able to see. Now I've put you on this camera so I can tilt it, but I'll go in on this first. So a lot of gentlemen in our lives will not sleep under roses, pansies or lilacs. But Australian flowers and waratahs and things, yeah, they're okay with that. Have a look at this work in here. So you've got all this fragmented piecing of lovely hand dyed fabrics that she's done. And then you just start to see all the thread work through here. Just to give it all of that dimension. And you can just see here the start of that beading, I'll show you a bit more of that. But it's just, uh, it, it's a very clever piece and it's just one of those other ones that I can stand and look at for ages. Okay, we're going mobile, we're going rogue with the camera. Let's take you up. There you go, have a look. So you can see there's one person here, or one, one mythical person here. It's a dream time person right there. So I can bring you into this. So you've got so much going on. The hair in here, it wisps away so it looks like it goes out into the clouds because of the light blue. The eyes, the eyes are incredible. There is fabric down behind and the pupils are all done with beads. And then you've got these beads adding reflection and detail through. And look at all that piecing. And there's little spotty batiks in here. There's all sorts of different fabrics that have been used to create that effect. Just, I don't want to take you on too bumpy a ride. There you go. Look at those. I like this guy here. I have to say, he's got a real elder look about him, doesn't he? With his beard. And his eyes, very knowledgeable looking man, very knowledgeable looking man. So yeah, just just gorgeous. And um, you know, and oh, I know what I wanted to show you. I wanted to give you this close up 
of the of the landscape down with the olgas. There we are. So you can see, yeah, Fiona. Imagine changing or changing the thread colours all the time. Yeah, I know. Talk about patience. Um, in fact, I don't have that patience. I will be very, very honest with you. I have invested in the multi-thread holder for the top of my seven, my Venina seven, uh, and have always got on hand now the um, the open toe free motion foot or the embroidery foot because I'm getting sick of threading it through the ring. I will confess that's on my machine, not on my cube, but on my um, on my Benina 720. Okay, so look at some of this work is just. That's bobbin work, folks. That's not done on the top, but that's to set up the machine so it loops from underneath from the bobbin to give you that real mossy uh, landscape foliage effect. All the colours down through here. Heavens. And now this and this is really interesting stitching on the augers as well to give the dimension of the rocks. Do you think about it? She's just laid down essentially what are half, you know, semi-circles of fabric that, for want of a better word, will look like a blob when they were first put down and now they look like the olgas because of the stitch work in them. Just fantastic. Just fantastic. All right. So, are we all feeling inspired? I hope so. I will need you to get cracking and sewing um, because if you're in Melbourne, you will not be outside in our garden this afternoon. It's it's pretty horrendous out there. So, um, and if luckily it's not autumn, you don't want you don't want autumn um, because it's just everything would blow away. Ah, oh, yeah, I can look at that. Just that little bit there, I've got you on. That that's enough for me. Let alone everything else going on at the top of the quilt. All right, Are we all happy. All right, let's just go back to Rach. There we go. Back to Rachel. Okay, so we have one more show. One more show tomorrow morning. Isn't that a bit sad? But so exciting. It will be it'll be a pretty quick one because it's just all about announcing the winners of our bag challenge. So that's going to happen tomorrow morning. I do want to say that if you don't win one of those three prizes, please now. Do not be sad because I have also been packing up little presents to pop in your um, your bags or your boxes to send back to you with your bag. So no one misses out on getting something yummy coming back. We'll organise that for you. And uh, yeah, we'll do that. And then again, we'll just touch briefly on what we're going to be doing on Thursday in terms of talking about the rest of the year and what's happening. Uh, but yeah, so we'll do tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. I'll see you then and then we'll have our show. Please put it in your diaries or your phone for 2 o'clock on Thursday. I'm going to go back and put Judy's jacket on now and just swan around the warehouse with it just for a little while before I have to put it back in the bag and send it back. All right. Enjoy your evening. Bye, Flynn. And I will see you all uh, tomorrow morning. Bye.